Hey everybody, welcome once again to my playthrough channel. I am probably playing this wrong. And this is Martin, and today on the channel we are going to be uh, doing a playthrough of a roll and write game called Lantern. And let me just bring this right up to the camera so you can see it. The very, very nice graphics and art here. So Lantern is a roll and write game. In fact, it won the 2019 Roll and Write Game Design Challenge on Board Game Geek. And it is designed by, uh, if I can just show you here, Don DiMaggio with artwork by P. Brio. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. There's their email address. And uh, this is a 10-minute solitaire roll-and-write game, uh, fantasy-themed, and we are going to uh, try to work our way through this right now. I'm going to try my best to show it to you, but as uh, if, if you've ever seen any one of my playthroughs, you know that no matter what I do, no matter how uh, hard I try, I'm probably playing this wrong. Uh, and you will let me know in the comments, of course, if I am, and you will help me to correct it. Uh, I'm a solo player. There's nobody around to correct me when I'm playing it wrong. So I'm going to rely on you guys. Hopefully my, uh, my mistakes are minor and uh, will not require me to redo the whole playthrough. And I hope that you guys uh, get some use and some... Uh, some um, um, uh, usefulness out of my playthroughs. Okay, enough talk, enough talking, Martin. Here we go. Um, so uh, this, the, the components for this game, the game setup is all you need is the player sheet. And I've got the player sheet. In fact, I've got mine laminated and I've got my uh, non-permanent marker here. I've actually got it two-sided. I've got the original black and white non-colored version on one side and then the nice colored version on the other. And all these files are available on Board Game Geek, and I will, of course, place links in the video description below um, once uh, I'm done editing this video. Also, you need 6D6, which I just happen to have right here, and I just dropped one. So there you go, there's a 6D6. And we're gonna be rolling it here on this nice felt uh, pad that I've got over here that I got from the thrift store. All right, so looks like we are ready to get started. Um, let's take a look at the rules. Needed to play 6d6 pen pencil this rule sheet object of the game. Defeat the enemies scattered in the map zones by realizing all the dice combinations from zone 1 to zone 8. So, to prepare for your adventure, roll 6d6 to generate the abilities and constitution. So, we have to roll 6d6 and then assign them to these uh, different abilities. Critical hit, counter attack, Magic Spell, Constitution, and Experience. I'll show you how this works out. So first of all, we roll the 6d6. Here we go. And we hope to roll high. If we roll less than 15, the rules say you probably should roll again. Or if you really want to, uh, try your luck with the adventure. So what do we get here? We got a 6, we got a 5, we got a 4, a 3, a 2, and a 1. Um, so what is that? 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 4 is 15, 18, uh, 20, 21. Okay, I think we have enough to be able to uh, proceed on this adventure. So we're going to assign these dice now to each one of these abilities. So first things first, um, critical hit allows you to flip your die um, from the whatever is to, to show what to, to make the result whatever is on the other side of the die so if you had a die that was three and you used one of your uses here then you could flip it to whatever was on the other side which is a four so it allows you to modify your die roll so i think you know what based on my previous experience i'm going to assign my six to this uh critical hit and i roll i make six uh boxes here that i can cross off and these will correspond to however many times I can use that ability. Okay, so I've assigned my six. Um, the next one is the counterattack. And counterattack will allow you to uh, subtract one or add one to your die roll. And that's a very powerful ability, so I'm going to assign this five to my counterattack. So I will make five spaces here. You can make them boxes, you can make them uh, circles, it's up to you. Okay, I've assigned my, uh, my roll of five to my uh, counterattack skill here. 
or ability. Now, magic spell is going to allow you to re-roll one die. So, I'm going to take my four and assign it to magic spell. There you go. And then I have a three, a two, and a one. Three, two, and one. So, um, I'm going to... the uh, This is Constitution. Constitution will allow you to re-roll uh, any number of dice, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, re-roll any number of dice. So I'm going to assign my three to Constitution. So let me put um, three boxes here. There you go. And the others are uh, assign... Well, this one is experience. And whichever die I choose to assign here, so I've got a two and I'm going to assign it here, um, you get to cross off that many uh, circles of experience. So I'm going to cross off one, two circles of experience. Whenever you complete uh, one of those levels, then um, you can add a box to uh, any one of your abilities. So that's the benefit of experience. And finally, I have a one here, which I get to assign to this guy up here, which is, uh, what is that called? What is that called? Assign, assign the remaining die to zone five, which is called the bonfire, and draw above the line inside the bonfire scroll as many circles as the assigned die result. Okay, so I'm assigning a one to the bonfire. I've actually never reached the bonfire, so I have no idea if uh, what I'm doing strategically makes sense. Okay, so now that we have created our character, we've assigned uh, our dice to our different abilities, our uh, constitution, our experience, and the bonfire. Now the, the time comes to start resolving uh, battles, entering these zones and resolving battles in them. Zone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the bonfire, 6, 7, and then eventually, if you're really lucky, you make it all the way up to uh, the dragon who is in uh, zone 8 or level 8. Okay, um, so um, the way uh, how to play is starting from zone one, you uh, enter the zone. And to enter the zone, you roll all six dice. And here are the requirements uh, that you have to defeat the monsters uh, in that zone. And if you're really, really, really lucky, if you roll exactly what the requirements are, so if you can take a look here, um, this... Here in zone one, I'd have to roll a four, a five, and then three of the same number, whatever number that is. That could be three ones, three twos, three threes, three fours, three fives, or three sixes. Um, if you're really lucky and you roll this right off the bat, then that means that you uh, vanquish the enemies here in zone one, which is these two wolves right here. Um, so let's, uh, first of all, let's enter the zone. We'll roll all six dice to enter zone one. Oh, and I dropped one off the ground. Let me just go ahead and grab that one. All right. And I'm going to re-roll that one die. Okay, here's what we got. We need a four. We have two fours. We have two sixes. We've got a two and a one. So, uh, remember, oh, I hope that you guys saw that. Uh, four, four, six, six, two, and one. Um, and we need to make four, five, and three of whatever. So here's what, here's how this can happen. Um, anytime you roll a one, a one means you get to uh, cross off another uh, piece of experience. So I'm going to set aside that. Well, oy vey, that's actually pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, do I have to use that? Do I have to um, use that one? Cross off an experience circle every time you roll a one during the entire game. Okay, I have no choice. Um, this one will have to be experienced. So let me resolve that right now. I get to cross off one of these experience things and I'm closer to uh, earning another use of one of my, an ability of my choice. Um, but that kind of sucks. So that one is no longer uh, in play because I've used it up. I'm moving it off screen now. So now uh, I've got a four that's taken care of. I need a five. Um, so 
I will use, I can take this two, and you'll notice this two, if I uh, flip it, that becomes a five, um, which will satisfy the five that I need. So I think that's what I'm gonna need to do, is I'm gonna use my, one of my uses of my critical hit to be able to uh, flip this two to a five. So I'm going to uh, use one of my critical hits here, cross it off. There you go, it means I use that. And I'll take this two and it becomes a five. And there it is, I've got a four and a five. Now, just to uh, satisfy the rest of it, I uh, need to have three uh, results of the same. I, I rolled a natural, two natural sixes here and I need one more six. And what I've got is a four, if you can see that. What I've got is a four. Um, I need to make that four into a six. And the way that I could do that is to use my, this uh, ability, this is uh, counterattack. If I use this up twice, then I can add uh, two, one for this use and one for this use, and make that four into a six. However, that'll burn um, two of my uh, counterattacks, which is uh, not a good thing. But my only other options are to reroll one die, so that's more random. This one is reroll all any number of dice, and and so in terms of how to modify my results, that's going to be my best bet. I will have to use two of my um, counterattack ability to turn this four into a six. So let's do that now. Cross this one off. Cross this one off, and I satisfy it. This now becomes a six. Boom. So now four, five, six, six, six which satisfies the requirement here, four, five, six, six, six. We uh, cross off the little space underneath one, meaning to say that we have uh, satisfied the requirements to vanquish these two wolves. Uh, they're out, they're dead, and now we move on to zone two. So you're getting a sense of this is how the game is played, right? Okay, so once again, let's roll our dice to see uh, what happens when we enter zone two. The requirements for zone two are you have to roll a two, a three, a four, and then two dice of the same uh, result. So here we go. This is our roll for zone two. We need a two, we need a three, we didn't get our four, but we did get two of the same result, which is awesome, actually and we have a six and we have a five. So this is actually pretty good, pretty good stuff here because um, all we have to do is burn one of our um, counter attacks and then this five can, be a, can become a four because as you remember, counter attack allows you to add or subtract uh, one to a die roll. So that seems to be the most direct way to turn this five into a four. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use one of our counter attacks and this five becomes a four. And so now we have satisfied the requirements for zone two, two, three, four, and then same, same. We got a two, three, four, a two and a two. We disregard this six, doesn't really do anything for us over here in zone two. And so we are good. And we've, how, what is our status here? We've still got five uses of our uh, critical hit um, skill. We've still got two uses of our counter attack and four uses of our reroll, our, uh, what is this one? Magic spell to be able to reroll one die, any die. And then uh, our constitution, we got three uses to reroll any number of dice. So that's our status as we complete zone two. So now we move on to zone three. And by the way, zone two was, uh, who, do, who do we fight here? There's this weird hooded figure at this uh, kind of wooden cabin. And um, that, that's who we fought here. So now we move on to zone three. There's three thugs waiting for us at the stone hut here in zone three. Um, what do we have to do? We have to get a three, a four, and a five, and then three of the same results. So it's getting harder now. Over here in zone one, we only had to make five uh, matches. Here in zone two, we had to make five matches. Here in zone three, 
uh, we've got to make all six match. We've got to use all six dice. So it's getting tougher. So let's see what happens as we enter zone three. Let's roll it. All right, what do we got? What do we got? We have two sixes. We have a two. Oh, gosh. Okay, that was a two, a three, and a four. We have a one. Anytime we roll a one, um, that is uh, an additional uh, experience. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, what did we need? We needed a three, a four, and a five. What we've got is a two, a three, and a four. We have a one, which has to become a six, and then we've got these two sixes here. Uh, this is actually pretty good because um, we can easily turn this two into a five. And how do we do that? By using our um, critical hit. We'll use up one of our critical hits here, and that allows us to flip a die to its other face, other side face. So this two now becomes a five. There you go. And so now we've got a three, four, five sequence here. And then we've got a couple of sixes here. And this one can also easily become a six by using the same critical hit ability. So let's go ahead and do that now. Use up another critical hit here. We have three more uses there. And this one becomes a six. So there you go. We've satisfied the requirements for zone three. We've got a three, four, five, and three sixes. And that was exactly what was needed here. Three, four, five, and three sixes. So now we beat up these three thugs here at the stone hut. There you go. Boom. We got you guys. So now we move on to zone four. And zone four is the most special one so far because you require three of the same result and then another three of a kind of a different same result. Um, so three of a kind and then three of a different kind and that's how you beat up. Let's see, we've got three skeletons <coughs> waiting, lying in wait for us here in zone four. Okay, so let's see what we can do to be able to uh, satisfy these requirements here in zone four. All right, we're going to roll our dice once again. What do we got? What do we got? Well, first of all, we've got two ones. And those two ones are... Um, here we go. We cross off. And now we've just advanced in level. Um, so we get to add one more use of any one of our skills here. So the question is... Do I want to add one more of our critical hit, which allows us to flip a die to its other face? Or do I want to add one more of our counterattack, which adds, which adds or subtracts one from a die result? I think I'm going to add one more use to uh, counterattack over here. <coughs> there you go. So instead of two uses, we now have three uses there. Cool. So we need... Three of a kind, and then three of a different kind here. What do we got? We've got a three and a three, so we're not going to waste those. And this four could easily become a three by using uh, the counterattack skill. And then we've got two ones, and then this six could easily become a one as well by using our critical hit skill. So uh, this is actually a pretty good result for us. <clears throat> so let's do that. So first of all, we've got to turn this four into a three by using our um, counterattack skill to subtract one from that four. So, we'll, so it's a good thing we up this. So uh, we use our counterattack. This four becomes a three. Where are you, three? There you go. Boom. And these, this six has to become a one. So we'll spend one of our critical hits here to be able to uh, convert this six to its other side opposite face. And now we've got three threes and three ones. Boom. 
we just beat up these three skeletons over here. Um, and we took, we took them out. So we have satisfied all the requirements for stage four as well. Great. So now we move to the campfire. And I have no idea how the campfire works. So let's um, actually learn this together. I've never gotten to the campfire before. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, enter zone five, or I'm sorry, we're calling it the, the campfire, the bonfire, and add one constitution circle by drawing it above the line next to the constitution symbol and cross off as many experience circles as the circles drawn in the bonfire scroll during preparation, then proceed to step three, leaving the zone. <clears throat> um, what is it again? I'm not, I'm not understanding this rule. Enter zone five and add one constitution circle by drawing it above the line next to constitutions and cross off as many experience circles. Oh, I get it. Okay. So um, entering zone five automatically will give us an extra constitution. So that is this guy right here. Uh, constitution allows you to re-roll as many dice as you would want or need. And by entering the bonfire, we get to add one more of these. Like so. Perfect. So now we've just basically, we have a little bit more constitution. And we get to cross off as many experience uh, circles as we had placed here. So because we had used the one that we had rolled over here, um, we get to cross off one more experience here. Great. So now we are halfway to completing the requirements to move from level two to level three. Okay, so Bonfire was a brief respite from the uh, rigors of adventuring. And now we move on to zone six. What are the requirements for zone six? We need to roll a two, a three, a four, and then three of a kind. And that is a giant spider that we are, uh, that we are tangling with here in zone six. Okay, so, um, great. So let's go ahead and roll our dice and see what happens in zone six. All right, what do we got? We've got five, a five, a four, a three, three, four, five. We've got two threes and we've got two fives and we've got a six. Okay, how does this help us? Because the requirements for zone six are a two, a three, a four, and then three of a kind. Okay, so we've got the three, we've got the four, those fives can be a three of a kind. So now we have to turn something into a two. What's the easiest way to turn something into a two? Two, three, four. And okay, so this five, this five could become a, I'm sorry, this six could become a five by using one of our, um, critical hit, right? We could uh, subtract, we could subtract one from that six and turn it into a five and then that would be our three of a kind. But we still need this three to become a two and that could become a two by using one more uh, use of this critical hit. But then, that, then that, that means we're out of critical hits, which is not a good thing to be but that seems to be the most direct way uh, of doing it, at least to me in this moment. If you are sitting there thinking, no, Martin, you're making a huge mistake. There's a better way to do that. Remember uh, what I said at the start and the name of my channel, I'm probably playing this wrong. <coughs> okay, so um, I think that I have to burn two uses of my critical hit skill to one to turn this six into a five, and then one to turn this three. Uh, wait a minute, what do I need? Two, three, four, five. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Two, three, four. Uh, yeah, this three has to become a two. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so I um, can use that critical hit skill. Oh, no, sorry, that's not critical hit. That is a counter attack. Counter attack. 
<coughs> to turn minus this three minus one becomes two. Mm -mm -mm. Where's two? Where's two? There it is. And the six minus one becomes a five. Cool. So now we've got two, three, four, and three of a kind, three fives. Does that satisfy what's needed for zone six? Two, three, four, three of a kind. Yes. So uh, we make mincemeat of this giant spider. Cool. And so now we move on to zone seven, which is some sort of wizard atop a high tower. And what do we need to be able to defeat this wizard? We need to roll a four, a five, a six, and three of a kind. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what happens when we roll to get into zone seven. All right, we need a four, a five, and a six. So we've got a four, a five, a six, a two, a two. Are we, are you freaking kidding me? Okay, so we've actually got, we, we naturally rolled the four, five, six, and we've got a two and a two, and we have a one. Uh, this is annoying. <laughs> Here's why, because we've got our four, we've got our five, we've got our six, We've got two of the um, of the uh, three of a kind already built with these twos here, uh, and now we have this one, which could easily have become a two if only we still had uses of this. Um, which skill is this? The counter attack skill. But we use them all up in our last uh, in our last uh, part of the adventure. So we're all out. Oh, and by the way, I keep on forgetting, uh, this one uh, counts toward another point of experience. I hope that uh, I haven't been missing those ones and, and uh, counting them toward my experience. Um, but you know what? If I have and you noticed and I didn't notice, remember, I'm probably playing this wrong. All right. So, um, uh, we need to turn this one into a two and there's no easy way to do it except to start burning rerolls uh, which is super random but those are the only options we have to turn this one into a two we basically got to keep on rolling rerolling until this one becomes a two so i'm going to take my dice that are already uh the correct values that i need and i'm going to just place them over here kind of above the boxes that they correspond to. And now I've got this one. I have one, two, three, four uh, uh, options or chances to use this magic spell uh, ability to re-roll and hoping that one of those rolls is a two. So let me try that. Let me just try. There's, uh, I've got four tries. Here's roll one. I didn't get a two. But, 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 but. Check it out. Okay, so I'm going to use this. I used one reroll, and now it's a five, which is great now because now I can use my critical hit skill to flip that five to its opposite face, which is a two. <coughs> Kaboom! So now we got what we needed to be able to defeat this wizard atop his tower. Wafango, you are gone, wizard. Great. So that means, and this is a big moment for me, folks. This is the first time. Let me go ahead and get zoomed in here. This is the first time that I've ever ugh, entered zone eight, which is the dragon. And to be able to defeat the dragon, check this out. You need to roll any, you need to roll six of a kind. It's the hardest challenge in the game. Uh, and what do we have to be able to uh, achieve that? We only have one more use of the critical hit. We have three more uses of the magic spell, which allows us to uh, reroll one die. And then we have four uses of our constitution, which allows us to reroll any number of dice. And we have to make six of a kind. So that's very, very difficult. It's the hardest challenge of this game. Let's go ahead and roll 
And let's see what we've got to work with to fight this dragon. Okay, what do we got? We've got two, a one. We've got three twos. We have a one, we have a, f a three, and we have a five. Okay, what have we got here? Um, we don't have any more uses of our... Um, what is that? The counterattack, which allows us to uh, add or subtract one to a die roll. Uh, obviously, we've got these three twos here. And we've got to work with those. This one cannot become a two. This three cannot become a two. Uh, this five can become a two. We can actually do that because the other side, the opposite side of a five is a two, which means we could use our one remaining um, critical hit ability to be able to turn this five into a two. So I think that that's what we're going to do right now. Last use of the critical hit, and this five becomes a two. So now we have four twos. And now we've got this one and this three. Oh, by the way, that's a one, which means we get to cross off uh, one more of our experience points. And guess what? We just completed uh, level two, which means we can now add one more use of uh, one of these abilities so that we have to be very careful about which one we decide to add here. Um, either of these can be helpful. If, if we add one more use of the um, counterattack ability, which we will, we will already do that because we know we're doing that, then we could turn this one into a two. And then we'll have then we'll have five twos. So I think that that's the way to go. We're gonna use this uh, counter attack to turn this one into a two. And so now we have uh, five twos. And so now we have to turn this three into a two. And if we do that, we defeat the dragon. So let me go ahead and put our five twos up here. And what have we got? We have one, two, three re-rolls based on our magic spell ability and one, two, three, four uh, uses of our constitution. So a total of seven re-rolls. We have seven re-rolls and we have to turn this three into a two. Okay, let's try that now. Reroll one. Yes, we didn't even need any of our other, we only needed one use of our magic spell and we have one, two, three, four, five, six twos, six of a kind, uh, twos. And so that means, if I'm not horribly mistaken, we defeat the dragon. There you go. Um, let's uh, verify that. End of the game. You win the game if you can defeat the dragon in zone 8 by realizing the dice combination shown. You lose if you have no abilities or constitution circles left to achieve the required dice combination during step 2, fighting the enemy. Okay, so then step 3, leaving the zone. Cross off the circle under the zone number as you're leaving the zone. If you have completed, cross off an experience, etc. Et okay, great. So, looks like we have successfully defeated the dragon, which is the first time I've ever done it here uh, and it happened while I was doing this playthrough. Um, so I'm very happy about that and I hope that uh, you enjoyed this playthrough of the game Lantern. Uh, once again a roll and write and the winner of the 2019 uh, roll and write design game design competition on Board Game Geek. Um, and if you noticed any mistakes that I made during this playthrough remember I'm probably playing it wrong. All right, this has been Martin. I'll see you next time on another playthrough. Bye for now.